Okay, welcome again. We're going to do another presentation. This is another submission we made to this workshop, um, and it's uh, about digital signal processing tool for radar-based uh, human-computer interaction. We were here already, so anybody knows what is radar-based interaction? Yes. What is it? Radar-based interaction? Any ideas? So we have radar <laughs> and interaction, yeah? <laughs> okay, so we have radar technology and we want to, uh, we want to use it to build systems that allow humans to control digital devices, okay? Basically, the idea is uh, to harness radar sensing, to recognize gestures, uh, infer intent of our users, or uh, the context in which our uh, users are located. These are just a few examples of those. You also saw other examples throughout this workshop, but now the question to you is, what is common? to all of these examples. So you remember you had also an example of walking and running uh, with radar sensor on your feet, and you were trying to figure out what are you walking, what is the surface on which we are walking. Uh, you had here Monash talking about different letters. Yeah. So what is common? Okay, yeah, you could say the motion, but... Um, uh, there is something else because motion, when you infer intent, maybe it's not motion. It could be also from other things. So all of these things are classification problems. Okay. So basically you have a set of classes and you want to recognize um, for a specific data that you capture to which class that that recording belong to. So as this is classification problem, we can go to different stages for radar-based classification. Okay. So what do we need to do is we are working with the radar and the radar always transmits electromagnetic waves and then listens for the reflection of these waves back to the, to the, to the sensor. So first we need to generate those waves after impulse generation as the first stage of radar-based classification. And we can do different types of generators, yeah, like pulse Doppler, like ultra wide band uh, radar generation, and so on. So once we have these chirps generated and sent out to the environment, um, uh, once we have generated those chirps, we need to transmit them. Yeah. So we have um, different transmission receiver antenna combinations. Yeah. We usually work with arrays of this. Um, uh, transmitting the receiver antennas. And of course, we have also different, different ways of multiplexing. Yeah? So SIMO and MIMO configurations, for example. Okay, and once you've managed to actually acquire the data, which is actually a time series of voltage levels, um, and this is one time series for each uh, receiver antenna. This receiver antenna can also be a virtual antenna because it's multiplexed. Um, this is the raw signal that we, we get. And once we have this raw signal, we can do many different things with this raw signal. Okay, So we do some digital signal processing. Um, we can transform this time series into different, uh, different uh, things, like into the time domain, frequency domain, and then do different operations of the signal in order to generate some representations, so signal representations. And if you remember, um, what the previous presentation was about from Nguyen, he actually talked about how the different signal representations affect the recognition performance when sensing through materials. Okay. This talk is not going to be a repetition of that. So we're going to do something else. What we're going to talk about is just the step before that. Okay. What kind of digital signal processing do we have to do? Um, in order to get to, to this place so that we can go to feature extraction and classification. So we end up the classification problem. Not gonna go into details about digital signal processing. What we want to present here is a tool that we created because we believe that 
this step of digital signal processing can actually take a lot of effort from the researchers. So that's why uh, there is very little comparative testing within the radar, uh, within the uh, human computer interaction domain using radar sensors. What do we mean by comparative testing? This is example of comparative testing. So you have the same problem, the same set of gestures, and now you have different dimensions that you want to explore um, uh, and compare. So here the dimension was signal representation. Okay, so Nuan did comparison of different signal representations. Yeah, and he could do it because he had this excellent tool. He also built that tool, so. Um, but the point is we make this tool publicly available. So if somebody from you wants to use it, um, you get uh, access, access to this tool. Okay, so our tool. Uh, we have a tool which is called uh, DZPro. Everything today needs a name, so this has a name too. It has two parts, a visualizer and a batch processor. And the visualizer is here for you to, um, to sort of explore your data, yeah? to visualize the data, and then to configure configure your digital signal processing um, processing uh, pipeline um, through visualizing how 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 the, uh, how the signal representations look like. We support different uh, outputs, so different final signal representations. So range Doppler, range angle, and then we have eleva uh, elevation angle and point cloud data. Actually, this has been updated already, so this is already obsolete because no one is very hard working, so he also has micro Doppler now. And of course, the idea is to expand this representations that our tool can output. So in case uh, you, you are using some signal representation in your research, we could include it in the tool. So this would give people a chance to benchmark um, um, your representation uh, within different set of problems. Okay, once we have the, once we are happy with how our uh, data looks like after pre-processing, uh, we, we can actually uh, can generate a batch processor, which is a pipe, uh, Python script. So we basically through the Python command line interface, um, configure uh, the batch processing of uh, many, uh, many uh, recordings that, uh, that we have. So we have this done uh, using the configuration files. So you have two JSON files with which you configure the batch processor. And all of the configurations you set here are also configurations available in the, in the visualizer. So as you see, this is a combination of MATLAB and Python. So the processor is done in MATLAB and all of the rest is Python. Um, it's true. This has certain disadvantages, but definitely advantages in the sense that it makes it easier to develop such application. Okay. Okay, of course, behind the scenes, there is actually uh, quite a lot going on. Uh, this slide is too small, and we don't worry. We're not going to go through the digital signal processing pipeline. It's in the paper, um, so you can you can go through it. But the main point is uh, we end up with different signal representations, and these signal representations are representations used common, common, uh, commonly in literature. So we want to expand this so that we cover as many different signal representations so people can do more comparative testing. So this is now finally our DZ Pro tool, but why show you a static image if we have here uh, Nuan who will live demonstrate the tool now for you. So um, Nuan, I'll stop sharing so you can share the screen. Uh, this is, uh, so basically you just im. So first we have to, first we have to import, uh, we have to import the radar configuration. So then it knows which uh, MIMO we used, like TD or more BPM, all the range resolution and the chirp width and stuff. So you have to upload the uh, path, uh, I mean, upload the configuration file of the radar, and then in the path of the binary file, and once you have that, so then, <clears throat> so it extracts the IQ data, so it creates the IQ data from the binary file, and then it now, for now, it can create range Doppler images and also a spectrogram with range and time. So the, how the uh, 
how the target moves, the uh, how the range varies uh, with the time, and azimuth uh, <coughs> azimuth uh, angle and the range of the target, and also in the elevation how the uh, angle changes in the elevation. So if I play, uh, this is the gesture swipe left gesture. So this is after removing the static targets. So you can see, so, in, uh, so the gesture, I mean, we perform the gesture within two uh, seconds. So this is uh, about, uh, now it's about one second. So you can see uh, the range is about 30 centimeters. Yeah. And then it's moving. So here. On my computer, this uh, visualization is a little uh, slower. So the purpose of the visualization is that now you can preview the data, how, we, the, how the data would look like. And once you are okay with the visualization, you can export the configuration file and then put that into the batch processor. So then you don't have to run the GUI, the graphical user interface. You can, uh, you can run the batch processor and it will create all the visualization that you want. So here, this is the... It was the preview of the range Doppler images. And this is how, how the range angle would look like. This is the azimuth and this is the elevation. So, so it is starts about 30, uh, 40 centimeters. And the field of view of the azimuth is about 140 degrees. And the re resol angle resolution is about 50 degrees. So, I mean, I didn't use uh, your algorithm. So the range resolution is quite low. I mean, quite large uh, in, in this configuration. So you can see the target is moving from left to uh, right. Here. So it's about here. The computer is very slow today. So you can see now it just starts moving yeah. from here to Yeah, now the target is about mm, minus 33 degrees, minus 40 degrees. So the hand has moved to the other side. Yeah. And here we have some antenna effect. We have to remove the antenna effects and stuff. So that's all the uh, for I mean all the good signal representations. I have uh, I mean I um, we managed to create micro. Uh, micro Doppler images and also point cloud images, but point cloud images is point cloud data is not very it's it's not very robust actually it's very low resolution so I did not include it yet, but um, I hoping that the expertise would help us to uh, create more dense uh, point cloud data with uh, with our radar. So this is the, this is the spectrogram that actually we influenced by Arthur's work. Uh, in order to create this spectrogram, but it's still we have to get. So still we have to now we can ex we can get the range information, but you also have the permittivity information. So maybe uh, I will need your help with extracting the permittivity, uh, the re uh, relative permittivity from uh, a spectrogram. Yeah. So what, what I see would be very nice is, okay, this is the, the tool. This is obviously not the final, uh, final piece of software. Um, but it would be nice if the output of this workshop would be that we uh, upgrade this kind of signal representations with more advanced alternatives. Um, yeah. And if you are interested in this, um, uh, we could... We would be uh, very yeah. happy trying to implement this inside uh, our application. And of course, we can reference where this comes from and uh, we ask the people to cite this uh, appropriately. So this is, uh, but it's up to you also how much you want to get involved. And you see the tool also has uh, different settings you can, uh, you can do. So there is uh, some UI system that allows you to change these different settings for 
So oh, you can basically focus on the range that you are interested in. So you can you you can uh, you visualize between uh, zero and one meter or one meter to two meters based on your field of view, the field of area that is interested. And also you can, I mean, this is about uh, focusing on which velocity range you want to uh, focus on and also which range, uh, which range range that you are interested in. Also with the power, 